All right, work progresses on the Voron. Uh, a friend of mine, Godot, shout outs to him. He printed me some ABS parts since my Prusa is not capable of printing ABS. I don't have an enclosure. Um, printed uh, this for me, this uh, top cover that has right there, there's a slot for the chamber thermistor. Uh, this cable on this one that comes with the LDO kit is too long and the end, I think I mentioned in previous video, is the wrong size for the LDO Nighthawk SB board. So it does come with connectors, so that's an easy swap, but I was waiting to get this piece so I can uh, judge how long I need it to go, and I might do it after I get the umbilical set up so that if I have to route it behind or around the umbilical, um, I'll have the right length of the cable. So another thing uh, that was printed, the black parts were printed by my friend. This one here is to support an umbilical coming up. So it has a hole in it, so the umbilical would go from the tool headboard underneath this bracket up through the bracket, and then two zip ties would hold it in place. And the person who designed it did that so that if you had to take that umbilical off, you could just unclip the zip ties and take it off. Uh, the issue, however, is the hole is too small to pass this connector through. Uh, this is not the connector that connects to the tool board. This is the one that goes to the electronics under the printer. The one that is for the tool head is even wider. So even though it'll be zip tied for easy removal to this, uh, you'll have to basically unscrew this mount to get the cable off because yeah, it won't go through that hole without taking this connector off. This connector will also not fit through. Uh, if you can see it over here, unfortunately, I moved my printer around where it's difficult to see. This uh, stress reliefing um, gland that the umbilical needs to run through down here and then into this cable chain also is too small. So I have to take the end this connector off the end to run this cable. And that's where I am having an issue right now is deciding which of the two ways to run the cable. Um, I went to Ace Hardware, they have three foot, it's like $3 for, I don't know how many, four or five pieces of this, what they call music wire. It's also called spring steel, piano wire. It's basically just a really thin wire that will hold its shape because if you're just running this umbilical cable, gravity is going to make it obviously bow downwards. So if you have enough cable to go from wherever you're running it from to the tool head and you're printing something and that cable sags down, it can snag on your prints and knock them off your print bed. So you want to keep it up. Uh, the other issue with this printer is when it's fully enclosed, you've got this sticking up. If you print something tall, it's going to run into the top piece of plexiglass that'll go over the top. But hopefully it will bend and that won't be an issue. Now, I can mount it there, which is what the Chaotic Lab carbon fiber gantry kit comes with is the parts to mount it there and go through this cable chain or there's a modification I've seen that lets you mount it on the back panel here and that's something that my friend also printed for me and it's basically this piece that goes on that back panel along with this piece which goes is it this way. It's either this way or flipped around the other way, but it uh, lets you pass the Bowden tube through one side and the umbilical through the other side, and then you zip tie the umbilical to the Bowden tube, which is a pretty nice solution but it means that if you do this, I don't believe you can use the fan in the back. 
which I hadn't decided if I was going to use or not, since honestly, even though I've already had somebody say, ew, that I'm going to be printing PLA on my Voron, um, PLA wants ventilation. It doesn't want a complete enclosure. So some people say just opening the doors will allow PLA to print, print fine. Some people say they open the doors and they run the fan in the back the exhaust fan in the back. So if I don't have the exhaust fan in the back because I've run the modification that puts the umbilical back here and then all the way down under the machine to connect to electronics, um, I, I won't obviously be able to use the exhaust fan to get some airflow so it doesn't get too hot in the chamber for PLA. So I'm, I'm right now just kind of trying to figure out what way I want to do it. Um, as you can see right now, like I said, I've got the wire going generally here. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I would decide on the length and then bend it outwards so it would maybe go through one of the holes here and be zip tied so it won't come out or move up and down, I guess. I'm not finding a ton of information online on how to do that. Um, and again, I, I can pull this, you know, really far down, but do I want to pull it that far down? Do I want it to have more slack? I, I honestly, I'm just kind of confused about the best way to do this. Because you don't want it stretched too far but you don't want it, like I said, sticking up so high that if you print something that's tall, the, the thing is scraping against the top of the plexiglass. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. And what I might do is just flip the machine over and do the uh, bottom electronic parts while I'm thinking about this, because I really just can't decide on what the best way is to do this. Um, the kind of cool thing about doing it this way is this is the longest this cable needs to be. The print head all the way over here and the gland over there because this whole gantry unit is one piece. So no matter how far up or down it goes, this distance is the furthest distance it's going to have. Whereas if you run it out the back, then you have to have the cable long enough to go from the top back all the way down to the lowest point that the tool head can go. And as it rises up, it's kind of bending around this direction. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't know which way is better. Um, I could try this way here, I guess. And then if I don't like it, go the other way, I guess. Um, the other thing is, do I have enough room for all the slack of this cable? This cable is huge. Um, this Voron is the 350 millimeter, and you can see that cable is enormous. Now, they do give you every connector you could possibly need in the kit, including this connector and pins. So I'm wondering if that's for people who say, this is way too long, I want to cut it a foot shorter. They cut it a foot shorter, put a piece of shrink tube, which I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a piece of shrink tube on there, and then there's the individual wires that go into the plug. So maybe that's why they give you the extra plug and connectors is in case you want to shorten your wire because you don't have enough room to store a foot and a half of this umbilical cord neatly underneath the machine. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Um, another thing I did today, also apart from my friend, and it's it's horrible uh, because these are yeah black carbon fiber with black three parts, and I'm trying to point out things I did. I realize that um, this right here is the X end stop. It hits the carbon fiber gantry on the other side of the printer when it's all the way at its limit. And mine, I took the switch and I 
bent it up in a really weird angle to get it to touch because this chaotic lab tap, which is where the switch is mounted, was not made to work with the chaotic lab carbon fiber kit. And that's why the switch was made to touch the end of the standard um, aluminum extrusion gantry and not the carbon fiber gantry, but they did come out with an update that includes, includes a little tiny 3D printed part that you're not gonna be able to see there because it's black and the back of the Chaotic Labs tap is black. But there's a little 3D printed uh, piece that moves the bracket that the switch mounts to further that direction, which makes it work. So I swapped over to that rather than have my bent up, not very nice looking switch. It's purely a cosmetic thing. Either one still would have worked fine. Um, I did find I had to change the connector. The connector on the stock uh, Voron 2.4 LDO kit, the board had a two pin connector for the X axis. And the reason is the LDO kit is made to have, it comes with a X and Y end stop plastic piece that goes onto this, the 3D printed version of this piece. And so that's where it detects the print head hits the switch that's mounted here. And when this goes back, the switch gets triggered when it goes all the way back here. And that's how it knows it's end stop for Y and end stop for X. But because I'm using the Chaotic Lab um, carbon fiber gantry, um, it moves the Y end stop switch to right here. So it's not over here, it's here. And then it puts the X here. And the LDO kit board, stock board that comes with the stock kit, has a two pin connector for the X end stop that it says is not used for the Voron. Well, it still is wired up, so it works with the Voron. So I just had a two pin connector from this switch to the original board, and it was able to detect my X end stop. But the Nighthawk SB uses a four pin for X and Y end stops. So if you don't have the tap, actually the tap doesn't really have anything to do with it, does it? If, you, if you're doing your uh, X end stop, well, yeah, if you're doing your, your X end stop here on the Chaotic Lab tap, um, then you can plug it in to the Nighthawk SB board, but you just need to use a four pin connector with ground being the top, the X being the next one down. Um, I think the next one after that is Y and the next one after that is five volts, I think, which I'm not sure what you would use that five volts for, but I'm sure there's something. So yeah, the way I have it is just a four pin connector with just a ground and an X connector. So that will send the X end stop information through the umbilical cord down to the bottom of the printer. So I will be removing all of these cables with the Nighthawk SB. This is 14 cables in this. And then the second connector, which is somewhere in here for the NeoPixels, is two cables. So there's a total of 16 cables here that stock run, like I said, through ch cable chain that goes from the tool head over to here. Another cable chain that goes from here to here through a plastic uh, tunnel that you print. And then into this chain and then down to the bottom. So instead of that, there'll just be one umbilical mounted, I don't know where, either here or, like I said, up to the back of the printer here. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully less weight, less fuss, less breaking wires. Um, yeah. So the other thing that uh, it does is... It eliminates the need for the board underneath the printer, the breakout board. Uh, these wires all go into a little PCB, and then that PCB has the input for the 14-pin and the 2-pin connector, and then there's individual wires that come off of that breakout board that go to the X end stop, the Y end stop, the thermistor, the 
everything comes off of that little board and then plugs into the control board. All those wires are going to go away as well. So that breakout PCB will go, this will go, all the individual wires that went from the breakout PCB to the controller board will all go so that the umbilical will carry all of the instructions down to a small board that interfaces with uh, the Raspberry Pi. And that tells the controller what to do. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't really show you much of anything, does it? So this little board takes 24 volt power and the umbilical cable in, and then it has a USB connection out to the Raspberry Pi. And then the Raspberry Pi communicates to the already existing USB cable to the Octopus control board to tell it uh, what to do, where the inputs are, and what information is coming from the tool head and going to the tool head. So there we go. Um, more progress. Like I said, the umbilical is the only pain in the neck part because there's a couple different ways to round it. And either way, I'm going to have to pull this connector off. Um, I looked online. I believe this is the same as a PC power connector. And the way to get them out is um, using staples. You put a couple staples on either side, push them in, and they push the tabs that hold the connector and in place and then you can pull the wires out so hopefully that's all there is to unplugging these um, i have taken photos from several angles so i know which wires go where there are two black ground wires i might put a little bit of silver marker on one and also mark the connector although i'm pretty sure they are both grounds that join up on this end to the single ground. So there's four wires on this side. There's five wires on this side. Two of these are ground. Only one of these are ground, so pretty sure it doesn't matter which of these two grounds end up in these two spots because they're both tied to the same ground at the tool head. But yeah, I might just mark it anyway. So there we go. Um, umbilical questions, not finding much information online, which is the best way, or many details on exactly how to route things. And then flipping it upside down and working on the electronics.